When you see what happened with stocks today and the whiplash that we saw, what matters more, Greece or China? <laughs> well, I think Greece, I think for one thing, it's hard to really point at one issue today that caused this rebound. Obviously, as you discussed, there's the 200-day moving average, which sort of uh, you know works as like a milepost for investors, or at least their algorithms, to look at the market and say, well, is it really this bad? And a lot of times it is a support level like this. If you fall below it, then it obviously becomes a you know an overhang that the market has to fight through. But that's a good sign. That at least shows that there are investors uh, willing to you know, buy these dips still. The, the, that said, the news flow out of Greece definitely was improving today. It sounds like you know, they're at least talking again. Negotiations are upcoming. And you know, there is still the chance of a, of a deal before the default on the ECB loan. So people were optimistic about that. But it really, it really seems more like a technical bounce, That's almost an unex, yeah. unexplainable bounce. That's what it seemed like in commodities, too, when I was calling around being like, what's going on? Yeah, right, right. Um, but what is going on here in the U.S. is second quarter earnings season is really upon us. Alcoa is reporting after the bell tomorrow. What is going to be driving growth? Is it going to be real earnings or dividends? And Jonathan Golub from RBC Capital Markets has a great chart delineating what, per, what, per, what point of S&P earnings relies to earnings versus buyback. What do you make of this bar graph? Well, it, for one thing, it's encouraging. You know, the, the wrap against the earnings in America the last few years have been, well, it's all been driven by buybacks, you know, which obviously reduces the share count for a stock and there, therefore, you know, artificially boosts the earnings per share. But as that chart, chart shows, it's not all about buybacks. On that said, looking at the estimates for this year of only 3%, buybacks are more than half of the earnings yeah. growth this year. So that is kind of scary. Um, as far as the, the quarter coming up, this could potentially be, and we've said this before, uh, probably five, I think it's five times in the last five years, analysts have said, ha have estimated that earnings are going to go down for, for the quarter. Um, it's looking uh, like about a 6.5% drop in earnings. Mm -hmm. Every other time, they've undershot it and earnings have actually come out positive. Last quarter, it was, it was very small, less than 1%. Um, this is going to be a big hurdle for them to jump. Negative uh, 6% growth is the estimate. Um, so there are some Tobias Lefkowitz at Citigroup, uh, I think Jonathan Gallo at RBC, mm -hmm. believe that the bar is way too low and that we will have some growth. But even if there is growth, it's going to be very small. Uh, X energy companies, it's going to be decent. Right. I was going to say, for Jonathan Gallo's point, he did say if you take out energy, that the actual earnings growth is much more than buybacks uh, for this year, right, so, right. so to your point. Right. But in terms of growth uh, versus earnings and revenue, there's another chart from Jonathan Golub that talked about the correlation between the two. And basically, for every 1% change in nominal GDP, you're looking at a 2% change in revenue. We're, you know, 0.2 negative percent on GDP for the first quarter. I know, that's, pre that's a pretty amazing chart. I guess the multiplier effect of GDP. I was trying to wrap my head around why that would be <laughs> such, a, such a multiplier like that. But yeah, obviously we've had a negative uh, first quarter. Sort of corresponds with the bad earnings season we've seen in the first quarter and potentially this quarter too.